Welcome to our second program that we call Ethiopia Shall Stretch Your Hands Towards God. We are in the, the, the country's second largest city, Diradaba. Why are we here? Why did we choose this city? Believe me, friends, there were many other cities that wanted us to come, but we picked this city because this has the largest Islamic population. We want to give the gospel to those who have not been exposed to it. There are other areas where they say, oh, you can gather such a huge crowd of Christians. But we want to go after those where the gospel light is dim. That those, as the Apostle Paul said, who have never heard, they should hear, they should see, they should understand. And so we're here to open their eyes to the gospel. Now, yesterday I talked a little bit about the rich history of Ethiopia. Ethiopia today, when I was here 15, 16 years ago, the population was just over 60 million. Today it's well over 100 million. The last census, 103 million people. And, and the Muslim population is growing because there's so many refugees, especially where we are, we're close to Somalia, and many refugees have come across because of the war. Others come from Eritrea. And so the population is growing so rapidly. And that is, this is what brought us to this place. You, you know, Jesus said that his gospel is for all people. And, and that's our passion, that all people would hear, all people would understand. And sometimes, you know, one person or one group of people, they hear the gospel again and again and again. Others have not even heard the name of Jesus. This week we had people and of course, I say this week, the meetings are still going on here in Deradava as we are recording these programs for your benefit. There were people who didn't even know who Jesus was. Uh, they didn't understand that he was the healer, but in love, he reached out to them. And, and so we're here uh, is speaking to the people who speak the Amaric language, people who speak the Oromo language, and some people who speak languages, they don't even hear the message translated, but God's love is still shown to them, it becomes a powerful testimony. We're going to show you lots of what's happening here, but first I want to look a little bit in the rearview mirror again at some of the campaigns we did here 15, 16, 17 years ago. And while we're showing that, I'm going to find a shady spot where we can share more with you. Oh, oh, look at this. The doctor told this man there was nothing that could be done. He had lost his hearing. Jima. Jima. Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa. Look at this polio from birth. And Jesus has healed him. His leg has become normal tonight. Come on, move your leg. Look at him go. Let's walk, let's run. Her sisters carried her here tonight. Here is one of the sisters. What's your name? So you help carry your sister here tonight. You don't have to be carried home. You can walk on your own. Look at her smiling here now. This man's eyes have opened tonight. Touch my nose. Come and touch it. Well, let's walk a little bit more, Mr. Jamal. This is a miracle of God. Look at him. Look how free he is. Thank you, Jesus. You feeling good? Everyone saw this woman start running. I have now been told what happened. She was paralyzed from her waist down. Doctors told her she had to go abroad. It's always
always nice to look back because it reminds you of God's faithfulness. And uh, I realize now, 15, 16 years later, that preachers arose out of what we did here 15, 16 years ago, and so many people were touched, and they come and tell me how God did miracles for them. But now the country has grown so much, as I said in the opening segment, and, and we are here for a new wave, a new thrust to reach a new generation. Jacob, who you met yesterday on our telecast, Jacob Benderstein, he is joining me again today on our program. Jacob, how are you feeling today? Feeling great. Yeah. We've come a long way. <laughs> We've come a long way, that's right. You know, I was thinking that sometimes when we are preparing for a campaign, we don't want to actually tell people all the trouble we're going through because we're discouraged enough ourselves. We don't want to discourage them. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It is a secret. But, but now we kind of come through it. So we kind of, by getting closer to the finish line, we still have meeting tonight and so on and so forth. But, but uh, now when you see God do miracles and all that, does it seem that all the struggles you had preparing this, does it seem worth it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, that, that's, I mean, I said the other day, if we don't see healings or people saved, you know, we just better give up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. It reminds me of a marathon runner who's been running, I think a marathon is 40 kilometers, and then when he comes into the stadium and everybody is standing <laughs> cheering, he says, okay, I guess all the pain was worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe you feel a little bit like that. I feel great when we see all the Muslims that are healed and, and people receive Jesus. I mean, um, it's just a big relief, you know, finally, finally yeah, yeah, we're yeah. here. So. And, and, and you know, uh, the first comment on the very first night, yeah. one of the pastors who was uh, taking us in his car back from the service, his first comment to Tyna and I in the car were, oh, this is unbelievable. Just so many Muslims healed. Right. So this is really sh shaking up the Christians, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole committee, all the churches, they didn't believe their eyes. They came to me and said, all these people that are healed, they're Muslim. You know, we have never seen that before. See, so it's God showing himself mighty among people who haven't known that Jesus yeah. is the Son of God, that Jesus is their Savior. No, they, I mean, the first day, uh, all the people that were healed were Muslim. And, uh, Any special case stands out to you? I, I mean, so many, so many things. I mean, I've, I've interviewed the people that came up that they've heard the radio advertisement from Karsa, Lange, and they didn't even speak to the Amharic language. This is quite far away places. They've yeah. been traveling from hours, you know, yeah. and they're healed. They're Muslim. And uh, especially one lady that was coming up to the side of the stage just crying with the crutches up in the air. And then her daughter is running up on the stage just crying, you know, and yeah. saying, that's my mom. And they's, it was fantastic. We've had several of those family things where Tyna mentioned on a program yesterday, a little three-year-old girl, I believe it was, who couldn't walk, and then yes. the mother and the father came. Then we've had a number of those yes. where the whole family, it's, it's so touching. It's God's love moving on people. Yeah, that's Somali family there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So was that, I don't I even, think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, Jacob, uh, be encouraged. <laughs> okay. we are, you're in the stadium now, and all the pain of the marathon is now kind of lifted by the rejoicing of what God is doing. Well, we'll talk to you some more tomorrow, but right now we're going to go to the highlight. Every program, I'm going to show you at least a one-minute clip of the greatest moment in the service when thousands say yes to Jesus. So let's go with that. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I believe you died for my sins. And that you rose from the dead. Jesus, come and live in me. You know, there was no hesitancy among the people here when we asked them to pray with all their might. They prayed with all their might. 
and, and confess that Jesus is Lord. And Tina, you get to stand there with me night after night to watch this. And I don't think I asked you out of the program yesterday, but you don't get tired of seeing that, do you? No, never, never. It's, it's so touching. It's so wonderful feeling. And, and you know, uh, we, we, the days go by so quickly, don't they? Because oh, we have the yeah. pastor's seminar mm -hmm. in, in the morning, and, and pastors come from all over, and then we barely have time to recuperate, and then you, you know how it goes. It's full of action. We are very busy here when we are in the festival. Now, the my seminar. beloved wife, I'm gonna ask you a question that I've never asked you before. I think you might know, or I guess there's no correct answer. Oh, oh. <laughs> but I'll, I'm just gonna oh. ask you, I'll see what you're gonna say. Obviously, what we're doing here works. The yes. pastors and others thought it wouldn't work. Crowds wouldn't come. Muslims wouldn't respond. So what do you think is the key that makes it work, what we're doing? Is it because I'm so deeply spiritual or what's the key now? <laughs> well, you know, uh, one might think that that is something that you have such an anointing or there is some kind of a method that you use in, uh, with Muslims, but that is, it's nothing like that. The question is not at all, all about methods or how, how you are trying to do it. It is simply the gospel. It is, it is the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and God's love, His grace, His love touching people, opening their hearts. And uh, that's, that's all that is needed. It is not about the method. It's not about some mysterious anointing that one has. It is Jesus Christ and his love, his grace. I think you gave the right answer. <laughs> now, you know, when you were given the answer, I was reminded of something years ago. You know, people see our advertising, nice posters, and we have a person or someone who was healed of blindness, someone who was healed of deafness, maybe someone who couldn't walk, who is walking. And some of us always hold the advertising. So, so they asked me, can, I, can we do your pictures? Can I borrow your pictures? And I said, you can, you, I'll give you my pictures, I said. Mm -hmm. Pictures are taken in my campaigns. You can print your own poster and put your own name as a preacher. <laughs> yeah. But I said, that's not gonna make it happen. And mm -hmm. this person actually did that, and it was a big flop. I yeah. said, and, and he told me, I said, the key thing is, you must know how to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can have all the marketing, and we like to market. You know, of Jacob course. was mentioning earlier that yeah. people from hours away from here, Muslims living in rural areas, had yeah. heard our radio advertisement and right. come. Of course, of that's course. important. And by the way, you, you the partners, you're paying for that, so yeah, I just wanted course. to get that across. Yeah. But, but it's like you say, you know, I, I almost detest when people say, oh, you have such an anointing, Peter. Uh, you, know, you know how I get. Yeah, I know. It's really irritating. Irritates you, I know, I know. And it is not about that. We have anointing, Jesus is in us. We have that, but if we don't know the gospel, if we don't really know what Jesus actually did for us, then we are just representing rules and, and commands and judgments and, and uh, uh, condemning people, and that is not drawing anybody. Yeah, that's right. You know, I have a stay here with me. I have a little teaching I want to draw your attention to the book of Acts chapter 14, where it says that God was granting signs and wonders to be done in response to the word of his grace. So the apostle, in this case Paul, and those working with him were preaching the gospel of God's grace. And God responded by showing signs that, that, that indicated this is the message. And it says, and I'm quoting there, and they were preaching the gospel there. And then it says, and there was a certain man, he was paralyzed, paralytic, sick in his feet. He had never walked uh, from his mother's womb. He was sick. It really describes the situation. And he says, this man heard Paul, the preacher, we might say, speak. And then it says that Paul saw that he had faith to be healed. And when he saw that, he said, stand upright on your feet and walk. And the man leaped and walked. And then after that, there was this uh, tumultuous situation because they thought that Paul's anointing had done yeah. it. See, that ties in with what you said there. Uh, but he, he expounded the scripture further. So what I wanted to show here is, and I didn't even think about this when I asked you the question, Tina, but I right. can see how this flows together. 
that the gospel is the power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God. It says they were preaching the gospel there. And then it, and it's describing the city of Lystra in the book of Acts. But we are in the city of Diridava. And the same God, the same gospel, the same Jesus is here. And the same God, the same gospel, and the same Jesus is available where you are right now. In your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you're watching this, on your phone, or whatever way you receive our program, the same gospel, the same Jesus is available where you are. Then I, I see this, that the gospel created faith. Uh, it, it, it was not that Paul told the man, you must have faith faith just came. All Paul did, he saw the faith in the man. He noticed that there was something in the man's expression that, that said, I'm ready. I'm going to believe. And we see that, Tina. Yeah. I love when I see faith in somebody's heart. It's like they are saying, I'm ready. And we don't have to do a lot. They just respond and they receive and they say yes. And then what we see here is that then the preacher just said, stand on your feet and walk. And that's what I feel like. I feel like the Apostle Paul here, he was just playing his little part, which was to share the gospel and then to exhort the people to respond and take action to it. And that's what we're doing here. And we're believing the same for you. What is this gospel? Let me itemize it a little bit. First of all, and you can see it across the banner at the backdrop behind the stage when I'm preaching. It says, you may wonder what those <laughs> words are because it's in the uh, Ara, uh, 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 Arama, uh, Amaric um, language. Amaric. I can't even say it now. Amaric language. It says, you are loved. And we start with that telling the people, God is love. And you were created by God who loves you. But many have forgotten God's love. Many see God as judgmental and vindictive. So I said to them last night, I think they see God as a great police officer in yeah. the sky, ready to arrest them yeah. for their evil. But Jesus revealed who God really is. And, and so we share that. And, and we, we reveal God's love to them. And then they say, yes, I want this. I want to receive it. Oh, this is so beautiful. Maybe, Tina, when I'm talking like this, somebody is saying at home watching, well, I need to receive Jesus. Yeah, I'm sure there are many of them. Yeah, and we want to send them, I think it's on the screen, our producer will put it there. Um, the same material we're giving out around the world. We have two little booklets. We'll send you the Enlightenment Bookman and then Salvation, God's Gift to you. You see them there. Then, Tina, in a moment we're going to go to a clip for what God has done here in Diradava this week. Mm. But um, I, I want to say we need partners. We need helpers. Sure. Now calls are coming from all kinds of cities in Ethiopia. And so we appreciate so much people who are standing with us. I'll tell you a little bit more after this clip how you can be a part of this. But let's go to that clip right now. And Tyna, stay with me here. Uh, and, and we'll share with the people how we all can be involved. This is a great privilege. Watch this. On the first night of the Friendship Gospel Festival in Ethiopia's second largest city, Diradawa, where more than 80% of the people are Muslims, Peter Youngren had declared to the people that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the proof of this statement was instant, as God showed his love by healing the people, especially many Muslim friends. The second night became another demonstration of God's love and power, reminiscent of the words of the Apostle Paul who said, When I come to you, it was not with words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration and power of the Spirit. Can you see me good? You can see my face? Touch my nose. Come on, touch it. Come on, touch it. Oh. So for six months, you were sick. Kick it a little bit. He may play football soon. This is a very common form of paralysis. Because of blood pressure, you receive a stroke. And it touches one side of your body. Move this arm. Move this one. This one. Move it right now. Swing it around like this. Thank you, Jesus. Mama, move like this. Look at her go like that. Mama, who healed you? 
Look at he's showing his stomach. You had a growth there. How big was the growth? Like your fish. You had a growth here, and a growth here, and a growth there. Where is that growth? It's gone. She's crying because she's happy. Where were you sitting in the crowd? Where were you? So I couldn't reach her. But Jesus touched you. Which side did you have problem moving? It was your arms. Move your arms like this. And go like you're a boxer. Go like you're boxing. So my wife, there was a tumor here. How does that look? It's perfect. Hello? Hello? Amen. Amen. Diredava. Reda. Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa. So, Jimma. Jimma. Jijiga. Jijiga. Ah. 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 And then do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And do like that. And do the other one. Come on, jump a little bit. 18 years sick. And let us. Can you see my fingers? How many fingers? How many now? One. How many now? Five. This man. He broke his leg five years ago. Look at him go here now. Well, that was a beautiful segment. You saw joyous faces, and we're going to go back and show you more in a moment. I ask you to help us. You know, we have here a replica of an Inukshuk. Every person in Canada knows what an Inukshuk is. It was our logo for the Vancouver Winter Olympics. And some people, oh, this is a pre-Christian sign. This is what the Inuit people had. I, I, I believe that God left a witness of himself. That's what the Bible says in every culture. We see that in all the cultures of the world. There's something we can connect with. And to me, the Inukshuk, it's a gathering place. We are to gather around Jesus. The word Inukshuk means in the image of man. Jesus came in the image of man. And you can even see the sign of the cross in this. And so to me, it's a beautiful sign of the gospel. And I want to give it to you. You see the amounts there. Either if you become a VIP family partner with us, or if you share a special one-time gift right now. Tyna, you know how important it is for people to share with us. So just say a word to people what this means uh, when people become partners with us. It means that you will see thousands and thousands of uh, people in heaven when they have heard the good news of Jesus Christ with you. And we are so, so very grateful that you make this possible. Thank you so very much. Thank you in Jesus' name. Well, let's watch more. The scripture says that before Jesus healed the sick, he spoke the word. And Peter Youngren follows the same modus operandus. Because faith comes by hearing the message of him who is the word of God in Jesus Christ. This is love, <laughs> not that we love God, <laughs> but that God loved us <laughs> and gave Jesus <laughs> for the forgiveness of our sins. <laughs> for God so loved the world. <laughs> God didn't come and send Jesus into the world to condemn, <laughs> but that no one should perish. <laughs> So believe in him and live. Wherever the gospel is preached, joy is one of the inevitable results. In one instance in the scripture, it says, there was joy in the city. The joy on the faces of the people were unmistakable as they told the story of what God had done for them. She had an accident, car accident. And she has metals actually even in her legs. She was not able to talk. Even two minutes ago, she was a little weak. But the longer she walks, the stronger she gets. Look at Mama. Look at Mama go. Why is she crying? Because that's her mother. That's her mother. And she can't believe what's happened. Look at, look at this. Look at this. 
How beautiful to see people's lives changed. I'm back where we started the program. And to me, I think I mentioned at the beginning, one of the greatest signs of God's love is when people don't even speak the language that is being translated here. And some of the people, the Oromo people, which is a large population group, they only speak the Oromia language. But they bring their sick. They bring people who are blind and deaf. And God heals them. Maybe all they have is a relative who sits there whispering in the ear the message I'm preaching, that Jesus is alive, that Jesus took your sin. And that little conveyance that they get is enough. And then God's love explodes in their heart. Friends, when I think about that, I think, isn't it worth it what we're doing? Isn't this valuable? Isn't this worth every dollar that you have given and invested? It seems to me like God is so eager. God is so eager to reveal his love to them that, that, that they just get a little bit, a little tiny bit from a friend translating to their language and then God's love touches them. That's why I'm saying two things in the closing minute of this telecast. One, we need your help. I believe this is worth every dollar that you give. We need you to become a VIP partner. We need you to share your very best, best gift. Now we have grand plans for this country and we have the most ambitious campaign schedule ever this year, 2018. Thank you for standing with us. But then secondly, the same love of God that explodes in hearts here is for you at home. You see the information on the screen, call right now. You see the information for those who are giving, but also call to, to say, I've received Jesus and received that, those booklets that I'm giving to people here and around the world. We want to send them to you for free. But I say a big thank you to you. And what we do in, in sharing the gospel, what you do as a partner is because we know God loved us and because God loves us first. Didn't start with us. We love others also. Keep calling. Thank you.